I spent over $1,000 on AI tools so you don't have to. Trust me, I've tried everything in the market. $100 AI tools, $50 AI tools, $1,000 AI tools. Over the last two years, me and my team have been experimenting with every major model and it's culminated in me creating this video to break down the only AI models that are worth your money based on your needs. The reality is most people are overpaying for AI tools and not getting their full functionality. So hopefully by the end of today's video, you have a full idea as to to what tools are worth it for you. If you do like content like this, where I teach you how to get an edge with AI, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on that post notification bell so you don't miss a single video. We've got lots of great content coming on the channel over the next few weeks, including AI tutorials, deep dives, and frameworks to help make you money and level up your life and productivity. So the tools I tested were ChatGPT+, Claude Pro, Gemini Advanced, Perplexity Pro, and Grok. And by the end of this video, you're gonna know the exact model for you. You. We're going to start with ChatGPT Plus and then we're going to move all our way along the models until Grok. Spoiler alert, I think all of these models actually have different strengths and different use cases for certain people. So your innate belief right now might be, oh, ChatGPT is the best just because it's a model you're most familiar with. Well, I'll tell you right now, it's definitely not the best for every use case. And there are certain use cases which I find myself going to certain LLMs distinctly for uh, that we're going to break down in today's video. So firstly, let's start with ChatGPT. I would say ChatGPT is the best generalist on the market, especially now with ChatGPT 5. Look, I know a lot of people aren't that happy with ChatGPT 5. I'm going to do a video in the future showing you exactly how I'm using it to get the best out of it. But overall, look, it still is a better model than ChatGPT 4. And it's basically like a faster version of GPT 3. If you configure it right, and especially if you use the thinking mode instead of the auto mode, you actually get really good answers, even though it takes a tad longer. So although it's not the best for everything, I think as a generalist, it's pretty good. Its voice recognition is pretty good. I think the ability to build custom GPTs is pretty good. The agents feature is pretty good. Obviously, you know, GPT also has Sora, which is the video model, which I think is very good, despite it not being available worldwide. And overall, just for general prompts, general information, even general copywriting I've done a little bit of on GPT-5, it is a very good model. Its limitations, like many models, is it hallucinates. It sometimes states incorrect information. Image generation is slow and is pretty unreliable. Like if you're trying to generate infographics on GPT, you're probably going to have a lot of hallucinations and the pro tier to get the best out of the model cost $200 a month, which I think is quite expensive. I think most people would get away with the $20 version. But for me, a power user, you know, I need the $200 version. Otherwise I get rate limited. So the last thing that I think GPT is very good for is ideation. I find, you know, when it comes to creating content ideas, when it comes to anything super like high level strategic thinking, creative thinking, GPT is really, really good. It's not the best researcher out of all the models. I'll tell you what that one is later in the video. And it's not the best at finding news. I'll tell you what that one is later in the video, but it is very good creatively in terms of helping you ideate. So it's a pretty good executive assistant if that's how you want to use it. All right, moving on to the next model, Claude Pro. Claude is without doubt the best model for writing and coding. Now, if you configure it correctly, it's probably your best copywriter because I find it has the most natural tone. GPT is probably my second favorite over all the models, followed by Gemini. And I don't really like Grok for copywriting, but it's very good for other things. Uh, Claude 4, and I'm not a coder, but some of my team members are, is great for coding. In fact, this dashboard that you're viewing right now, we coded on Claude's interface. So that just proves that you can generate infographics. You can generate things with real use cases already using Claude. It can create apps and documents. It has a projects feature for complex workflows, and it has a code terminal integration if you want to go even deeper with your coding. So it's very, very good for both of those tasks. Its limitations are it doesn't have image gen like some of the other models. The max tier costs $100 to $200 a month, which you'll probably need because coding can be quite intensive. And the pro tier only has 40 to 80 hours weekly. So once again, if you're a power user, it does become quite expensive. It's also not the best at research. There are better models for that. But Claude is my go-to in my daily life for anything regarding soft coding. Once again, I'm not like a deep coder, but I create infographics. I create spreadsheets to track certain things in my life. For example, you can do an expenses tracker quite well on Claude. If you're doing a property development, you can get data for the property and the rental yield on Claude. It's really good for that sort of stuff. And you can even use a better research model like the ones we're about to get into and you can combine Claude. So get the data from another LLM and then put it into Claude to create the visual representation. Something that I do a lot of is using two or three LLMs at once to get the best output out of each LLM. So I won't use one LLM strictly for one task. If it's a more complex task, I might combine research on one model, writing on one model and then coding or interface on another model. And uh, the final part of that is where Claude comes in. All right, now heading on to model number three is Gemini, specifically Gemini Advanced, which is 1999 a month. 
month. I think the main pro of Gemini is the fact that it's so interlinked with the Google ecosystem. So you'll notice it even comes up on emails now, on Google searches. So if you're constantly using Gmail, if you're using YouTube, I find Gemini has better data. Like for YouTube analysis on video performance, I find Gemini quite good. It's also really good at YouTube titles if that's your niche because it has all of that data. Obviously it's video gen is also quite strong. I'm expecting them to come out with a new update soon, but, but they're obviously one of the market leaders in that space. I also think it's a pretty good all rounder. Although I must say it's probably the model that I find the least useful outside of specific YouTube context because I find other models are better. There are better models for news, research, ChatGPT is a better all rounder and hallucinates less. Gemini still glazes a bit and I know there are prompts for you to make it anti-glaze, but it still does glaze you a bit. So, you know, basically tells you you're right or agrees with you or comes across way too strong sometimes. And I find it's not as reliable for a lot of tasks as GPT, but it is very good for some specific use cases regarding the Google ecosystem. And that's where I use it. So, so when I'm looking for like formatting for Google Sheets or Google Docs, or if I'm looking for YouTube title analysis, Gemini is quite good. But outside of that, I think it's weaker at creative writing than Claude. And I think it's weaker than GPT at a lot of use cases, but I'm sure they'll come out with a new model soon. Gemini was the best model at one point in time. They just haven't shipped major updates yet, but um, you know, it's Google. I know they're cooking on that front. All right, now heading on to the final two AI tools here. And both of these are, I think, extremely powerful tools for specific use cases. And they each shine in different departments. So the penultimate one is Perplexity Pro. This is the research powerhouse, probably the best research model available. ChatGPT Pro is pretty good for deep research, but if you're doing a research project, getting Perplexity to scrape, find, and collate the initial research, I think is a great idea. For example, if you wanted to research the history of gold price performance versus equities and the times where it outperforms and the times where it underperforms and you wanted modeling around all of that, Perplexity is going to be fantastic. If you were investing in a rental property and you wanted in-depth modeling, I reckon doing the research on Perplexity, so looking at price growth in certain areas, looking at comparables, looking at baseline, looking at risk beta and collating that into a research document, you're going to get the best output on Perplexity. But Perplexity is not great at like image gen or, you know, putting that into like nice wording. So then you can take that information and put it into Claude. It's not that good at storytelling. It's not that good at creative writing. It can't generate images effectively. It's pretty limited for conversational purposes. So I think as a general purpose LLM, it's probably not the most value for money for the average person. To be completely transparent, you're probably going to be better off with either the final one I'm about to speak about or the first one, which is GPT. But if you are a researcher and if you have a niche need for deep research tasks, if you're a mathematician, if you work in finance, if you work in data analysis, perplexity is going to be a must have in your research stack. And of course, I use all of these because I have different purposes amongst the business that command different tools. The final AI tool is Grok, the X Premium Plus version, which is $40 a month. The price actually increased substantially, but also the output also increased substantially. So it's in line. Grok has become one of my most used LLMs because I'm constantly on X and obviously having that functionality of being able to look at a post, click on the top right corner, get a summary and ask follow up questions is just amazing. And it means that it's just such a natural integration into my daily workflow because I'm researching a lot of stuff about financial markets on X and to be able to get information and even follow up with counterpoints. So if I see a tweet, I don't entirely agree with, but you know, I want counterpoints or you know, I want to do a bit of thinking around it. It's just so nice being able to do it in the app. But as I was experimenting with that and I started using Super Grok, like the even more expensive model and going down the path of, of even more in-depth analysis on Grok, I realized it really was a powerhouse of the model specifically for news. I find Grok much more reliable for ChatGPT for sourcing live news. Like if I'm researching a crypto project, for example, and I want all the live information about that project, you know, latest tweets, latest news, bad things being said about it, good things being said about it. And I want all of that collated. Grok does an amazing job of that much better than ChatGPT. And I think it's just the nature of the platform. Like Gemini, for example, is trained on a lot of Google data like YouTube. So it obviously has the leg up there. Whereas Grok is trained on a lot of news and information, which is basically what X is at a platform. So Grok has the leg up there. And the way they're able to use live news and live X data to train Grok means that it has some amazing outputs for stuff like that. It's also less censored. There's more honest answers. It has a fun mode if you want witty responses. It has a heavy multi-agent system. And they also have the claim that they are the most intelligent model. And I can see that in some of the logic if you really push it to the brink, but obviously different models have uh, different use cases. So Grok is, I think, going to be pretty good. They also have their video feature, which is getting better and better. It's currently limited to six seconds, but it's getting better. They also have image gen. So I think uh, I think Grok is definitely one worth having in your stack. Okay, for me personally, what are the ones I use the most? Well, it's ChatGPT Plus and it's Grok followed by Claude 
followed by Gemini. Claude and Gemini are pretty close though because I use them both for different niche tasks. And then I have perplexity last. But the only reason I have perplexity last is because personally, I'm not doing deep research projects myself. Often my team's doing that, but I know they use perplexity a lot. So if you are personally gonna be doing deep research, I still think it's worth it. It's just, I'm ranking them in terms of my usage. I think if you want an all rounder, ChatGPT is still the king, but I think second up would probably be Grok in my opinion for my personal use case, because I like financial markets. I like breaking down the news. I like sourcing news. And that's just relevant to my job, not only as a trader, but as a content creator and a business owner. I also use some benchmarks to break down which AI tools actually the smartest for you. So GBT5 actually comes in number one, followed by Grok, although in some tests Grok ranks higher. In terms of premium model intelligence, so if you use the most expensive tier, Grok comes out on top of ChatGPT5, but not its Grok 4 basic model. So the heavy model comes out ahead of GBT Pro. Then you've got Claude, then you've got Gemini, then you've got Perplexity. So Grok 4 Heavy is a multi-agent system for complex tasks. GPT-5 Pro has extended reasoning for hard problems, although it takes a while, of course. Claude Opus 4.1 is the best at coding and technical writing, and then Gemini Deep has deep processing power, but isn't technically as smart as the other models. I would say that the premium plans are worth it if you are a heavy user, so if you have a job that relies on it. But what I always recommend is that you start with a free version of any model. If you learn to like it, then upgrade to the next tier. And then if you really like that, then upgrade to the next tier. I don't think you need to leap into a $200 a month subscription without making sure that the use case actually fits your need first. So the good thing is a lot of these models have free versions where you can experiment with basics. And also on this channel, we'll be showing you a bunch of stuff so you can get a feel for how these models work in different contexts. Remember, things are always evolving. Models are always shipping new codes, new features that will be breaking down here on the channel. So make sure you're subscribed and have the post notification bell turned on so you get the latest updates and use cases of how you can utilize these models to enhance your daily life. I'll see you in the next video. Have a lovely rest of your day. Peace out.